And up next, one of our favorite people in the world, Tim Duffy. Thank you for joining us today. Tim is the, uh, as you know, he's a, has, uh, wears a lots of hats. Um, he's the CEO of uh, DX Engineering, and I'm proudly wearing my DX Engineering yeah, hat. Yeah, I today. just, I was looking for my DX Engineering <laughs> hat. I've got a yeah, you're out of uniform. There. You're out of uniform, Rich. We'll give you a uh, yeah, um, uh, <laughs> Tim. I know you. Every time I do a uh, D expedition, uh, your guys send me a hat. That's right. Uh, so, that's, that's, uh, I, I got a couple of them around here somewhere. Well, that's okay. You got 30, forty minutes to find it. Okay, well, I'll find uh, it. And speaking of hats, uh, Tim wears a couple other ones. One is a contest university chairman. One of our favorite events every year, and I know that uh, you'll probably tell us a little bit about that coming up next week. And of course, he runs uh, one of the best uh, multi-op superstations in the, in the world, actually. But what you might not know is that when Tim was growing up, uh, he was a big fan of the Munsters, especially uh, Herman. And uh, he learned a lot. And listening to this episode, there was a, a lifetime takeaway from this. I've always wanted a ham radio set. And now that I've got one, I'm going to listen in on distress signals and notify the authorities and prevent disasters <laughs> and noble things like that. Calling CQ, calling CQ. Uh, uh, come in, please. Yeah, so the takeaway here, and Tim said to himself, I am never going to call CQ again without having somebody answer me. And <laughs> and he's proven that uh, over the years. So we're so pleased to have you with us, Tim. I'm going to give you the stage. Take it away. It's all yours. Well, thank you, John. And hello, Rich. Uh, great job with the convention. Just super to see all the attendees. And thanks so much uh, for having me here today. Um, we're going to get right into it uh, with the slides. John, let me know when you see my screen. It's right there. Perfect. Okay, great. Super. Well, hello from DX Engineering. And uh, we're going to talk about some of the new products um, that we have and, and some of the exclusive products that we have. But this is a very exciting uh, product that we have uh, come out with. Uh, this is the uh, DX Engineering Noise Loop. This was uh, designed by Don WD8DSP, and you may have uh, seen March QST this year, uh, where Don talked about how he came up with the idea for this antenna, and then he shows how to actually build one out of wood. And uh, so we worked with Don, and the idea was to make it easy for others to duplicate um, his noise loop. And so this is made with fiberglass and uh, wire. It's a very simple uh, antenna, but it's highly effective in finding noise um, it, because it, it has a, a cardioid pattern to it. It has a very deep null off of the rear. And one of the great things is, is this, this works from uh, the AM broadcast band all the way up to 10 meters. Um, and once you get above 10 meters, the directivity of the loop is compromised, but um, it has a very deep null off of the rear. And of course, that's where you, you wanna use that null to actually find where the noise is. And um, so it, it's 48 inches by 24 by 36 inches. And the way Don designed this was so that it would fit in the back seat of a, of a car, you know, when you're out trying to hunt noise. Um, so this is um, this has really been a very popular product, and we are so happy to have worked with Don WDA DSB on this. There was a lot of um, thought that he put into this. Don does uh, a lot of noise finding work, and a lot he's done a lot of postings on the RFI reflector and the top band reflector about how well this works. The one thing about that loop is that it's deaf. It has very low gain. And so um, we decided that it would be best to 
come up with a preamp that was battery powered that could be used with the noise loop. And so uh, the engineers here at JX Engineering got together and we came up, this is a 30 dB preamp that works from 100 kilohertz all the way to 30 megahertz. It's got um, a 30 dB attenuator. When you start to get on top of the noise, then you need an attenuator to preserve the directivity of the noise loop. And so it's got that. And also, if uh, you happen to be close to an AM broadcast station, you can actually filter out uh, the AM broadcast band, basically 540 kilohertz all the way up to 1.7 megahertz. And so you get great battery life, 30 dB a gain. Everything is switchable. There's even an LED to tell you it's on and uh, it's handheld, or you can mount it with Velcro or uh, rubber bands to the actual noise loop mast. We just recently came out with another uh, line of our DX engineering coax. This is DXE214, and we sell uh, cable assemblies, so they're already pre-assembled in uh, popular lengths like 3, 6, 12, 18, and 25 feet with either end connectors or UHF mail connectors on them. And the great thing about uh, 214 is that it is double shielded and the shields are silver plated copper. So very high quality shielding. Uh, and the double shielding gives excellent isolation properties. The uh, center conductor is silver plated also, and it is stranded copper. Um, it, the dielectric, is uh, solid PE, so this has got a 66% velocity factor, and it has uh, great power handling, and uh, as I mentioned, exceptional RF isolation. Most of the times you see uh, RG214 on like duplexers on two meters and 70 centimeters, but more and more now with uh, SO2R and multi-op stations, they're finding that the uh, excellent RF isolation properties of RG214 and even RG400 are very helpful in keeping interference down. So uh, we now have DXE214. Here is another very popular product. Uh, we came out with this a few years ago, and uh, this is the DX Engineering um, ISO Plus. And uh, so what this does is it goes in your Cat5 or Cat6 Ethernet, and it will take and suppress birdies and noise that may be caused by the Cat5, Cat6 cable, or it will also uh, help to reduce RF that might get into your Ethernet from a close by antenna, for instance. So it, it actually works both ways. And uh, I have them all over the place here at K3LR, and there's no more birdies from the ethernet switches or the ethernet connections to the computers here. And uh, there are 20 computers in the shack here. So you can imagine um, this, this was a game changer. And there are several customer reviews on the DX Engineering website. And I, uh, <clears throat> I would like to invite you to go take a look and the customers are very happy with the way the ISO pluses have uh, reduced or eliminated birdies um, and other interference from um, the Cat5, Cat6 cables. And so uh, this is common mode RF attenuation, and we have them in two packs and in 10 packs. Um, you do need to have them on both ends of the ethernet cable. Um, Here's another uh, great product. This is, uh, we teamed up with Ward Silver in Zero AX, and uh, he discusses the use of RF ground planes uh, underneath radios, tuners, and amplifiers. And um, this is highly effective. In fact, uh, here at K3LR, uh, you can see there's an amplifier over here for 80 meters, and it's got its RF ground plane. And what this does, is it really, it reduces the voltage differences between cables and equipment. You heard uh, Bob Hardy talk about how important it is to have everything bonded to a single point ground. Uh, the first time I saw the use of an RF ground plane 
was when uh, WRTC, when we were in Brazil, and uh, they, actually uh, Dave Leeson came up with the idea to help, um, you know, we didn't have real good grounds in a lot of the locations. So he said, just take aluminum foil and put it underneath the radio. You'll be, you'll be very surprised how things will settle down. And they did. And so this is good engineering practice. Uh, again, take a look at um, Ward's book, Grounding and Bonding. And it, he explains all the science behind this. And um, we have this in six different versions. There are three sizes of plates and you can buy it also with this MDF mounting board if you want to uh, have a board um, underneath and uh, have the RF ground plane above. So it's really, really nice. And we do include the hardware uh, with it. And it's uh, brass hardware and bronze uh, washers. Uh, for open wire, uh, we have the uh, DX engineering grounding and lightning protection. This is a, um, a surge suppression system using uh, gas discharge tubes, capacitors, resistors. And uh, uh, with this, you, you can help bleed off static, uh, which is a big problem, uh, especially when it's raining or snowing and even sand. Uh, so this has been a very, very popular product as well. And uh, John, I thought maybe we, we might take a break and take some uh, Q and A uh, now, if, if it's sure. okay with, with yeah, you, John. Absolutely, and, uh, of course. Maybe between uh, you and Rich, you've uh, scanned the chat. I have not looked at the chat or the Q and A, uh, but if you have questions, we can. Yeah, there's a, a couple of questions. There's a couple of questions sure. up on the Q and A. Yep. Um, uh, from Pete, where Pete. are these DXE ISO installed? Okay, so the well, ISO. I know whether it's at the computer or at the switch. Uh, both. So uh, the ISO plus is installed at both the switch and the computer or at the modem. If you have a cable modem, things like that, where the RJ45, any place you have an RJ45 connection, that's where the ISO pluses are installed. Do you have a similar product for USB noise suppression? No, uh, we have been asked about that and we are investigating that. Uh, again, listening to Bob Hardy uh, talk about the sensitivity of USB ports, that is a real, real big problem. Um, you can end up with a dead USB, not only in your computer, but also in the radio or amplifier. We are looking at uh, protection and noise suppression for USB. Okay, I can invite the, any attendee, if you wanna ask, about, um, if you wanna ask Tim, rather a, a direct question, just raise your hand and I can activate your uh, microphone. It's a rare opportunity to talk to the man himself. No takers yet. Okay. How about an ethernet optical isolator says uh, Rick Tevin. Um, yeah, sure. You can use uh, ethernet optical isolators or you can use fiber, but uh, a lot of people already have um, the cat five or cat six installed. And uh, this makes it very simple to uh, clean up the interference that goes on all those birdies that you see uh, across the waterfall. They all just go away if you put in the ISO plus. Okay, and uh, I have Robert Farmer, you've raised your hand, so you're live. Robert Farmer, you're on the air. Robert, come in, come in, please. Do you have a question for Tim, Robert? He raised his hand, okay. Anybody else at the moment? Uh, here's a question. Uh, anything new in low noise receive antennas? Low noise receive antennas. Uh, actually, we, uh, we're working with uh, High z and uh, High z is, uh, revamping a lot of their uh, product line and uh, they will have some exciting announcements very soon. Uh, DX Engineering is also going to have some new products in that area uh, very soon. Uh, we have been working on uh, some new things there, um, basically trying to improve some of the uh, element buffers um, 
and, and things in that area. So uh, stay tuned. Every day we're adding stuff to the DX Engineering website. I can't emphasize that enough. There are, there are dozens of products that get added every day. And, um, you know, our catalog just came out uh, for 2021. Normally, you know, we introduced this catalog at Hamvention. Um, and so this, this went in home. Uh, most everybody in the United States should have received it uh, here in the last two weeks. And, uh, but that catalog has got um, just a small number of the products that we have. The website is really uh, the best place to uh, look for that. And you, on the website, you just click on what's new and it, that's where the new products get loaded every day. I want to compliment you, Tim, on the website. I don't know if, if you guys appreciate the, the, the level, the depth of information that Tim has on DX Engineering website. You can go in there and learn a lot about anything, but you then can download the manuals. There's, uh, it, I've never seen such a complete collection of useful information when you're trying to decide how to buy a product in this hobby. Uh, you just get five stars for that. Uh, it's amazing. Do and you're getting a lot of uh, congrats and uh, shout outs on the chat line for uh, for the catalog. People love yeah, it. Yeah, catalog loves it. The website and catalog are just first class. Kevin Adams has raised his hand. Let's see if he's serious. Kevin, you are, uh, you're live. You have a question for Tim? Yes, I do. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we can. Hey, Tim, how you doing, sir? Thanks for taking the time out of your day to, to be with us here today. What's your call sign, Kevin? Kilo 9, Kilo Romeo Alpha. Okay. Um, I have a 13 kW solar array on my roof, and I suspect it's my DC inverters that may be causing the interference, or I because I, I have a smart meter, um, I can send elect unused electricity back to the grid. I have a revenue grade meter connected to my DC inverters that um, the utility uses to determine how much I send back to them so I can get credit for it that I can use in the wintertime, obviously when I'm not generating as much solar. Um, do you have a product um, that would help suppress um, the, the I'm seeing the birdies across, the, especially on 20 meters. 20 meters and up is where I see birdies. It's like every 200 hertz, I see, you know, I, I can see a spike. And I can turn off one of my solar inverters that the meter is connected to, and it seems to go away, uh, even though the other, the other DC inverter is running. So I, I know if I go back to to the inverter, who, who makes it solar? It's, um, I can't remember the name, the, the brand name, but anyway, so wondering if you had a product that would help me at least suppress some of that or, or point me in the right direction on how I can uh, re rectify that situation there. Yeah, Kevin, um, I don't have uh, any experience with uh, noise mitigation with uh, solar arrays, but I can tell you this, um, in, Maybe that uh, ferrite, the, the right placement of ferrite cores, for instance, number 31 cores might help that. Uh, but again, I don't have any experience there. What I can tell you is that Ed Hare, uh, W1RFI at uh, ARL headquarters, who is the head of the ARL lab, does have experience and has worked with manufacturers on noise mitigation of solar arrays. In fact, I believe he's giving a presentation to a club and that uh, this coming, this week. And, uh, and I believe that the invitation is open to attend. And you can find out more information about Ed's presentation on the front page of the ARL website. That's ARL.org. So I would look there, Kevin. Great, thanks. I am a member too, so I'll, I'll go there and look for it. It's W1RFI for radio frequency interference. That, that's an easy one to remember. <laughs> there you go. Thank, yeah, thanks. And, to and, and other, other people have been commenting. Uh, yeah, ARRL has been working with a number of companies 
and uh, somebody recommended taking a look at the uh, Enphase IQ7 and IQ7 Plus. They're known to be fairly low noise. Um, there, were two, there were two comments on the noise loop here that I'll, I'll read real quick. You may, Joe Eisenberg said, I reviewed the noise loop antenna in the May CQ magazine. It's a great tool. And then uh, related, Tariq Nolan says, uh, the noise loop looks interesting. I'm in a very noisy environment. Do you ship to Europe? Yes, we ship to Europe every day. And uh, so just go on the website and all the shipping information is there uh, when you put your order in and we'll ship it out to you in Europe. And we also, uh, we have a number of dealers in Europe as well. Uh, Martin Lynch and Wemo come to uh, top of mind. So you can either work with our dealers in Europe or you can order direct. We've got a question from TV Bob Wilson. Uh, do you provide low or high power automatic bandpass filters like uh, W3NQN style? Yeah, we do have um, high power and low power bandpass filters from low band systems. Um, so um, we do not have elaborate uh, switching systems that are already pre-built. We do have uh, uh, a number of different antenna switches that can be used to configure automatic switching of uh, bandpass filters, but uh, low band systems, bandpass filters, very, very, very good quality, Rich. Uh, here's a question. Can the noise loop be used as a 160 meter receiving antenna as opposed to a noise loop? Yes, I, I believe so. It, um, I have not done that myself, but I have thought about that. Um, and I think it could be quite effective. The, the, the big problem though is going, I mean, if you have one noise source that you can line up that null on, so you know that would attenuate the noise that, but off the front of it, it's so broad. Uh, so it's not gonna have a lot of directivity, but if you have a problem noise source, that, and, and I'm not talking about atmospheric noise, I'm talking about you know locally generated noise, you could put that null right on the noise source, and then you know, you're going to have uh, less noise, more signal, but again, you do need a good preamp to uh, bring the signals up. Uh, related to that, Adrian Shapirka said, could you please discuss what options are available at the X Engineering for 160 meter transmit antennas? So uh, we do have uh, a reduced size vertical um, that uh, we have the Thunderbolt uh, 160 meter vertical. So if you type in um, DX Engineering in the search box, uh, DX Engineering 160 meter vertical, that'll come up. Um, but uh, and we have a number of wire antennas from Chameleon and others that we sell that will work on 160 meters as well. Uh, we do not have a uh, like a full size quarter wave 160 meter uh, antenna. Uh, we did build a pair of them for the Bouvet trip that actually went to Pitcairn and uh, the one uh, was erected there. That's a it was very expensive with the falling derrick, etc. So, uh, but it is highly unlikely that we would ever bring that to market just because it's so expensive. Uh, back to you, John. Bruce Stern asks, this is off the subject, but since you distribute these, do you have any sense that Kenwood or ICOM will update their top of the line transceivers, specifically the 7851 or 990, both remain older technology with small manufacturers such as Elecraft and Flex taking up the quest? <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, uh, the vendors, the, the Japanese vendors are very tight lipped about anything that uh, you, you don't, you don't have anything that leaks out. Um, you, we don't even know when new firmware is coming. Um, and we don't, you know, part of the thing is, um, uh, that's just the culture. And, and once you understand the culture, then uh, you have to accept it. That's just the way it is. But we don't get any tea leaves or you know pre-announcements on anything. Um, yes, the 7851, which you know there are 11 of them in this room here, so I know I know that radio very well. Um, it's an exceptional radio. Is there newer technology? Absolutely. Um, certainly, the 7851 is not an SDR. 
uh, nor is the 990, things like that. However, uh, if you look at the life cycle of the, the big radios like that, um, you know, I, I went through the IC 781, 7800, now the 7851. It was about a 10 year turn on each one of those generations. So we're, uh, we're about six years into the 7851. So, you know, maybe at the peak of the sunspot cycle, John, we might see something new. Maybe. I don't <laughs> good, know. Good answer. <laughs> um, Rob, uh, Robert Farmer, uh, he raised his hand earlier, and I guess his audio wasn't working. But his question is, he's looking for a USB hub protector that can be used for remote operation to disable USB communication via the internet when lightning's in the area. So we can get, yeah, you know, that's a, that's a really good question, uh, Rich. Uh, we don't have anything that we sell at DX Engineering like that. Uh, but I do know for remote operation, that would be huge um, because, you know, you can't get up there to disconnect things. Um, we have had some discussions with some remote uh, station owners that would like to have that. Um, it is something that we're looking at, uh, but it is not something that, that we're actively working on right now, Rich. Uh, here's a question. Do you have antenna traps now that Unadilla is out of business? No, we don't. Um, I, I actually had this discussion though um, with K4ZW because he has, uh, you know, he goes on the expeditions to various countries in Asia and Africa. And he, he actually was using some of the Unadilla uh, traps. And so uh, we managed to get uh, some of those on eBay and we're looking at them, but we don't have anything uh, in stock right now for that. You want to buy the company? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm always interested in picking <laughs> tires. <laughs> Alan Higby, <clears throat> Kilo Zero Alpha Victor. Hey, Alan. <clears throat> Says, I've been using uh, WDA DSB noise loop and DX Engineering's preamp for two months. Extra advantages are that the noise loop is unidirectional and broadband and using uh, with SDR, you can watch wide chunk of spectrum at once. This is very helpful in seeing which spikes and RFI is from the same source, a real game changer in the RFI hunting game. Yep, thank you very much for that, Alan. I, John, uh, Rich, I used to have uh, lunch with Alan uh, up at uh, Stanford uh, just before Visalia at the Tide House uh, with Trey Garlow's uh, group. And uh, so I Miss seeing you, Alan, and hopefully the Tide House is no more up there as well, but uh, hopefully uh, Trey will figure out a place for, for us to have lunch before <laughs> Visalia next year. John Riley's asking, what's the status of the DXE rotator? Oh yeah, man, you know, that, that was a, a bigger project than I think we uh, estimated. We are in uh, what we call destructive testing right now. Uh, and, it's, and we're, you know, we're trying to break it and, uh, and just see how strong it is. And um, at some point we will uh, start showing what we did to actually beat the crap out of this thing. Um, you know, all you have to do is watch the tower talk reflector for a day or two. And there are horror stories about rotators. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, it is the one area that has uh, eluded uh <laughs> amateur radio and the best rotator was developed during world war ii <laughs> you know, the prop pitch and um, and that's what i'm using on all my big antennas here now but soon they will be the dx engineering rotators um and uh, but we are in uh, destructive testing uh the components are all being received and uh and on order and we we hope to start assembling them here very soon it is okay. the number one question that we get asked. Well, Other than, can you do something about sunspots, John? You know, that, <laughs> we get, we get well, asked about we, that. But. Yes, we are really relying on you for that. Uh, K0MD, Scott Wright says, DX Engineering has a self-standing 80 meter vertical that could be adapted for 160 with some top loading, giving him a second option from DXC for 160. Yeah, that's a good point. You could uh, just put some uh, top loading wires on top and make, you know, you would have to deal with the impedance at the base of the antenna, but that's not uh, a huge struggle. 
um, a little bit of creativity there. And who knows, we might even come out with a kit to do that uh, inspired by K0MD. Uh, there's a question here. Uh, if you're familiar with and what are your thoughts on the Sun SDR DX radio? You know, I've never used one. Um, I have read about the Sun SDR, but I've never used one. All of my SDR experience has been around the IC7610. And uh, there's a bank of six Perseus SDRs back here that uh, take care of the K3LR CW skimmer. Uh, so that's really been my experience, uh, Rick. I can't comment on the Sun SDR. How about uh, uh, any plans to bring a VE3DO loop relay switch into production? Yes, um, there are plans uh, to do that. Um, that's That actually is, uh, that product is pretty close. Um, I expect to, us to announce it uh, pretty soon. Uh, many of you know I've been using the VE3DO loops here at K3LR for a long time. I've actually got a pair of them that we use on 160 meters. They're spaced 5 eighths wavelength apart. So that's about 320 feet. And uh, both aimed on Europe or can be sh shot to the South Pacific. And it is a very, very impressive, low cost, high performance, 160 80 meter antenna. Lee Finkel has uh, made a comment that uh, K0AV's article on tracking RFI is in the March April issue of uh, NCJ, in case anybody uh, wants to follow up on that. Um, Jeff Mendenhall says, What's the minimum uh, length for a reversible beverage antenna? What's the minimum length for a reversible beverage antenna? Well, the minimum length is as long as you can make it. <laughs> um, you know, depends on your going, backyard, right? Yeah, you're you're going to have uh, the, the longer it is, and there are some kind of preferred lengths. Uh, W1WCR had a book that we all bought as uh, kids, uh, and it was about beverages. One of the first beverage books I can remember reading, and he had some what he termed was cone of silence lengths. Uh, they were 440 feet and 880 feet. And, and so we all meticulously went out there and, and tried to do that. Um, you will find the manuals for our, for the DX engineering reversible beverage um, online, as John mentioned. And in there, we make suggestions on the lengths of the wire, the open wire uh, for that reversible beverage. So yeah, you got to get that straight. There you go, John. Yeah. Looking good. Here's one. Uh, a question is, what do you recommend for 80, 40 meter portable antenna that's airline portable that you can carry on? Oh, or you know, um, a portable antenna like that. Um, I would take a look at the chameleon line that we sell. Um, I, I Actually, I just had on another John Miller on Thursday on the Manufacturer's Showcase. Um, uh, John Miller is the general manager at uh, Chameleon Antenna, and they're out of Sparks, Nevada. But they have a lot of uh, very um, portable 80 and 40 meter and even 160 meter antennas that, um, that you could pack on, you know, and take with you on carry on, no problem at all. Back to the rotator for a minute. Will your rotator fit in place of a high gain of high gain rotators? Yes, that, that's one of the great things about this. This rotator will fit in Rhone 25. Uh, that being said, it's still like you have to do with uh, some of the high gain rotors. You're still going to have to, to cut a diagonal to get it in, but it will fit. You know, it, it, uh, we actually have a, a plate for Rhone 25 that will fit that rotator and it will fit. Okay. John, uh, G John G4IRN wants to know if uh, selling to the UK is going to get any easier. Well, uh, Martin Lynch is our, uh, is our dealer over there and we've got a great relationship with, with Martin and his team. And uh, so it, it's pretty easy right now, or you can order direct. We ship to the UK every day. Back to the attendees list. Anybody want to ask uh, Tim a, a question directly? Just raise your hand. Now's your chance. All right, here we, we can get back into some more of the slides if you want, uh, John. Cool, I'd say do that. 
for a minute. All right. Go right ahead. Here we go. All right. So let's let's get into some more of the uh, lightning protection products that we have, and uh, this is uh, a really nice unit for, you can use with your rotator lines and control lines. Um, a lot of um, amateur radio operators will put this right at the base of the tower. Uh, that's a very convenient point. You bring down your rotor cable or the uh, control lines from antenna switches. And uh, using, uh, we can use up to eight wires here. And uh, there's a really good manual online. And I wanna say uh, thanks to our manual writer, Parky KB8UUZ. Um, if, if somebody's writing better manuals, I, don't, I, I just can't conceive of it. His manuals are so uh, meticulous and, uh, and cover everything, especially you mean on this ISRCT. So this can be used with um, typically with voltages less than 60 volts um, operating and then the, there's uh, MOVs in here that actually clamp at 82 volts and uh, the terminal strips allow you to get to uh, uh, the eight wires for protection. And there are gaskets underneath the uh, terminals to uh, keep water out. Uh, very, very uh, nice product. Here's uh, one of our flagship products. This is the Noise Canceling Controller 2. Uh, maybe you had an NCC1. This is even better. There are many more features here. Uh, and the nulls are better. And this, I, this is one of the secret weapons that I use at K3LR for receiving on 160 meters. Um, I actually take and phase, uh, a lot of times I will phase the uh, high Z8 circle together with our three element vertical Yagi. And um, so uh, one receive antenna is on channel A, the other is on channel B. And then, um, the way I do this is I'll, I'll take a look for a, uh, a strong European station, and then I will use the balance and phase control and actually null that European station into the noise so that you can't hear them anymore. And then I, that, that little switch underneath the phase control is normal and reverse, that's the B phase. And then you flip that and boom, it peaks right up. And if you turn the NCC2 off, you lose about three dB. So by having both receive antennas on the peak, you get about three dB more signal. And I will kill for one dB, but three dB is really good on receive. So this is a, a, a tremendous uh, unit. Um, you can steer nulls. You can also null noise. Uh, a lot of people use this. Uh, the B antenna would be a noise antenna. And there's uh, 360 degrees of phase control, and uh, it's usable up to 10 meters. But that 360 degrees is uh, up, guaranteed up through 15 megahertz. Uh, the front end of this thing has exceptional dynamic range and a very low noise floor. This is a great product. Inside uh, the NCC2, you can add a number number of boards and accessories. Here's one of those. This is the Clifton Labs uh, AM filter, and it's uh, 70 dB of attenuation if you live close to an AM broadcast station. This, this can be a real game changer for you. And it just plugs right into the back of the NC, inside the NCC2 or an RTR2. Uh, we also can use it with the BMC-2. But take a look at uh, the AM band filter and you will see all of the ways that this can be used. Here's another one of our uh, premier products. This took uh, over four years to get right. And um, we're very meticulous about what we design and build. But as you can imagine uh, here at K3LR, there's a lot of RF floating around. And it's not just like at field day with 100 watts. Uh, they're 1500 watt transmitters with high gain, uh, Yagi arrays. And so the front ends of the receivers are very exposed. And if you've ever tried to run high power and have a receiver 
on an antenna that's very close, you know what I mean. And, um, you know, after, after every field day and DX contest, poor ICOM and Kenwood and others, you know, get a, back a bunch of radios where the RF stages of the front ends of the receivers are blown out. But if you use the receiver guard, the RG5000 HD, it has a six nanosecond response time. Um, it can reject up to 10 watts coming down the, the receiver coax. Actually, it can, it can handle lot, lots more than that. Um, here at K3LR, there are some cases when we're doing in-band work where you can have 35 watts coming back down the, uh, the adjacent coax. And this takes care of it. It sheds it. Um, so it's ideal for multi-operator SO2R stations, uh, also on field day. And uh, it, it plugs right into the NCC2 and our DMC2, et cetera. But take a look for the RG5000 HD and it has been reviewed in QST as well. Um, here's a, a, a pre-amplifier. This is our RPA2 and uh, 110 dB of dynamic range, a 3.5 dB noise figure, and it's got 16 dB of gain from 300 kilohertz to 35 megahertz. Again, it plugs right into the accessory slots of many popular uh, DX engineering products. If you need to match uh, 75 ohms to 50 ohms for receive antennas, here's a, a handy um, matching transformer. Again, it plugs right in. Here's a new product we just came out with. This is our uh, transceiver keyline splitter that allows multiple PTT outputs for one PTT input known as the Keyline 3. And all these products are on the DX Engineering website. Um, of course, uh, if you're thinking about four squares and thinking about uh, getting some gain on 40, 80, and 160 meters, the DX Engineering Transmit Four Square is outstanding. Um, has four directions uh, and they're split by uh, 90 degrees. And it also has omni operation that you can use with your four verticals. And there is hot switching lockout to uh, disable your amplifier while switching. And we offer a control console with this as well. This is a relatively new product. I'm actually uh, starting to install one of these here for 80 meters. Uh, but this is the dual vertical array, uses two verticals that are spaced a quarter wavelength. Uh, they, they do have to be full size quarter wave verticals. They can't be a trap vertical or shortened antennas, um, but uh, it's got three dB of gain off the front and one dB gain broadside. So there are three antenna patterns. You can have uh, you know, end fire, two directions, plus the broadside. And there's a very nice control console that goes along with this as well. This is a, a great way to get gain and directivity without having to put in, you know, a four square. Uh, high Z antennas, uh, as I mentioned, uh, they're uh, coming out with some new uh, HF receive antenna systems. And uh, I've been using the high Z here. I've got a high Z eight circle and a high Z four square received system and just outstanding performance. Um, Lee has done a tremendous job with this gear and uh, we're really happy to be the exclusive uh, dealer for high Z antennas. We also are exclusive in North America for OptiBeam. Um, and uh, any of you who have been on the air, I've heard big signals from OptiBeam antennas. Uh, DF2BO and his wife do a tremendous job building these antennas. And we are very proud to be uh, the distributor for OptiBeam here in the US. So those are my slides. And John uh, and Rich, we can take some more questions. We got a couple for you. Uh, Ron Tingle, K4 Mike Lima says, Tim, some years ago, you wrote a white paper regarding a preferred method for PL259 connectors. Well soldered after years in action at K3LR, is this method still your standard? Uh, you know, it, I, I'm doing a, a mix of crimp and solder now, um, but uh, folding the shield over the back of the body of the connector is still, when I'm soldering, that's still my preferred way to do it. Um, I've never had a failure here. 
there are there are literally hundreds of ways to to put on uh, PL 259s. That's the way that works best for me. Uh, I know it is not the right way. Uh, the right way is to solder through the holes, but soldering through the holes can be a dicey situation for a lot of us uh, because you can do damage to the dielectric uh, if yep. you get a good connection. And by by pulling the braid over the back of the shell, uh, over the back of the uh, body of the connector and soldering onto a silver plated uh, 83 1SP or the DX engineering connector, both are silver plated. Um, I just don't have any trouble with that and it works very well. And in fact, we have a stripper at DX engineering that actually strips the proper lengths of um, the braid and the center conductor and the dielectric uh, all in one, one fell swoop. And then you just put the connector on, solder it. Um, I can do one in less than two minutes now. If it ain't broke, don't, I mean, <laughs> Kirk Pickering, you have your hand up. I assume you'd like to have a, a chat here. Go ahead. K4RO in the house. Were you just raising your hand just for fun or <laughs> let's see. Here we go. Click on mute. Does that help? Uh, yeah, it helps. Yeah. All yeah. right. Q QRZ. You hear me now, Tim? I do, Kirk. Uh, good morning to you. Good afternoon. Good morning to you. Great to hear you. Hey, I have a quick question regarding the receiver guard 5000. I have a pair that I use on my ICOM 7700s, and I'm sure they've saved my receiver front ends on more than one occasion. My question is, what's the difference between the RG5000 and the RG5000 HD? Thank you. Well, the HD was uh, is a unit we came out with shortly after we introduced the 5000. Um, and the HD is capable of handling a little bit more power. And it also has a different attack point. Um, both, of, both the 5000 and, and the 5000 HD Will, will protect a receiver, but, um, and I don't, I have not committed to memory the exact uh, attack point, but it's uh, it's just right around zero dBm. And the attack point is, is where does it start limiting, uh, Kirk? But both will, will protect your receiver. And uh, like I said, the HD can handle a little bit more power coming down uh, the receiver port. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for your question, K4 Radio Oscar. The new rotator, um, question from Saul Abrams, wants to know if it'll accommodate a three inch mast. Yes, it'll do two inches or three inches. And we're using the K7NV style uh, connection for the, uh, so, you know, any of you who have, and in fact, we sell that on our uh, website currently. Um, Kurt, uh, tremendous mechanical engineer, and so we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. That's as good as it gets. Tim, it's uh, interesting. Uh, uh, I didn't realize you had picked up uh, the OptiBeam line recently. I can uh, uh, testify that I've had an OptiBeam up on my tower for 11 years now. I have never had to bring it down. I have never had to touch it. It is right where the spec sheet says it's supposed to be and has not only can't, not only doesn't it need any adjustments, there are no adjustments. You <laughs> simply, everything's pre-machined. You simply assemble it, you stick it in the air. And, and make use of those. <laughs> and and it, it is, uh, you know, it, it is well heard all over the world, but that's a great antenna. Well, thank you, Rich. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, good friend, N6 Whiskey Mike, Chris Tate's got his hand up. I assume, I, I assume it's real. I'm yeah, it's real. Can you guys there, hear me? There you go. Yeah. Hello, Chris. Hey, Tim. How you doing? Good. Hey, I, uh, 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 thanks uh, for a great talk, by the way, and hello to everybody. You know, Rich loves his antenna. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to talk to you. Uh, we, we, we've been ordering a bunch of stuff uh, out at the, the big station out here at the Radio Oakley. And notice that um, a lot of the stuff that we are ordering is showing up way ahead of schedule like days ahead of schedule and we took a look at the box and we noticed that it's coming out of sparks nevada 
And uh, so uh, I wanted to know if you, you would, wouldn't mind saying a few words about some of the new ship locations that you've implemented and maybe uh, share uh, a little bit of what type of products you're stocking those locations with, because it's really great to get that stuff so fast. Yeah, thanks very much for the question, uh, Chris. And uh, we are very excited to be shipping out of our West Coast uh, facility uh, in Sparks, Nevada. Uh, Many of you know that uh, DX Engineering is owned by Summit Racing Equipment. Uh, Summit Racing is the, the number one uh, go-to place for aftermarket uh, auto parts and more. And uh, of course, uh, Sparks has four locations, our headquarters in Talmadge, Ohio, uh, Sparks, Nevada, Arlington in Texas, and also McDonough, Georgia. So we just recently, uh, we lit up what we call Site 2, which is uh, Sparks, Nevada. And we are loading uh, inventory out there as quickly as we can. So the object is, uh, Chris, is that to have it available in Sparks and in Talmadge, but it's going to take time. As everybody knows, this whole COVID thing uh, really put uh, made the supply chain just turn on its head. And so we've been uh, struggling to get enough stuff out there. But Chris, we are... We are loading uh, pallets and containers every week and shipping out there. And we're so thankful to you and the rest of our West Coast customers that are now enjoying, uh, you know, one day ground shipping. Um, and, but it doesn't mean, it, you know, we, we, if we don't have it in stock in Talmadge and somebody buys something and they're in Maine, it's going to ship out of Sparks, you know, if we have it in Sparks. So, uh, we have a very sophisticated order fulfillment system that piggybacks on the Summit Racing Engine and what an engine it is. And uh, so, you know, we're shipping every night from both locations. And uh, we're and we also have curbside and counter pickup in Sparks too. If it's in stock in Sparks and you want to drive over there, you can. Uh, the, the people at Summit Racing, will, they have a smile on their face and they'll hand you. <laughs> your DX engineering product. So don't be, uh, don't be afraid if it's in stock over there, you can go get it, Chris. Great. Richard Roby has uh, raised his hand. Richard. Join yes, can, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Good. What's thank your call you. sign, Richard? Yeah, KB5 EDR. I, I like to think of it as everyday radio. So uh, <laughs> try to get on the radio every day if we can. But uh, I want to thank y'all for a great presentation. And Tim, it's uh, good to finally see you and ha have a chance to visit with you. But I want to tell you, I just bought one of the uh, Ham Plus antenna control switches. And your, your discussion, Tim, about the RF uh, receive device that you talked about earlier hit home. And I'm curious, Tim, if you could speak to how well this switch prevents RF overload on other radios that are attached to that switch. Well, you know, that, that speaks to the isolation of the ham plus switch. And I actually um, used that at WRTC 2018 in Germany and the isolation was tremendous. Um, I don't have the, the isolation numbers off the top of my head, Richard, but uh, take a look at the isolation. I think you'll find it's, it's quite good. Okay, thank you. Here's one. Um, is the technology and performance of the RG5000 HD that plugs into the NCC2, the same as the standalone RG5000 HD with the BNC connectors? Yes, they're, they're one and the same. That was N6 Tango Victor, just for your information. Um, Robert Sherwood saying, test data on the RG5000 HD can be downloaded at his website and a uh, uh, Norway Charlie Zero bravo.com forward slash DXE. There you go. Everybody. Thank you, Rob. Yep. Anybody else on the attendee list? You want to raise your hand, talk to Tim. We've got just a couple minutes left. Any other questions? Well, we're just about uh, at the 55 minute mark anyway. All right. Well, I'll, I'll wrap it up uh, then, John and Rich. Uh, go, one, go for it. Yeah, one of the things uh, you may have uh, noticed recently, the DX Engineering website is now mobile friendly. Uh, that means no more of the pinching and squinting. Um, 
our, the DX Engineering website know, understands now that you're on a mobile device. And so everything that uh, uh, is available in a mobile friendly format now, uh, DX Engineering is always also pleased to be a key corporate sponsor of the de-expedition to Bouvet, Three Yankees, Zero Juliet. So uh, we wish them the best and uh, we will be giving them a lot of antenna support and uh, other corporate support as well. I do give presentations to radio clubs all over the world. Uh, if you would like to have me come to your club and give a, a Zoom presentation, you can contact Terry Kilo 8 Mike November Juliet, K A M N J at dxengineering.com. And uh, those of you who are DX Engineering customers, I'd like to thank you very much for your support. Those of you who are, have not tried DX Engineering, I encourage you to try us. You'll be pleasantly surprised. We have over 400 years of experience on the team and um, we ship very, very, very fast. And uh, Check out our blog, the DX Engineering blog. It's on all bands, on all bands.com. On all bands.com is where you'll find out exciting information, including my social media calendar, which uh, I have three shows every week on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Just click on the events calendar and you can see what's coming up next. You want to give a little a little plug for Contest University? Go for yeah, it. Yeah, Contest University is this Thursday. Thank you, John. Go to contestuniversity.com. We're going to have a, uh, a super sweet party on Wednesday night hosted by Val and V9L. And then Contest University all day on Thursday. Hamvention Forums is, all, is uh, four hours on Friday. And then uh, this coming Saturday is the Hamvention QSO party. 12 hours of fun on the air. <laughs> Outstanding. Tim, you never disappoint. <laughs> 100%. All the best to you. You got to, by the way, if we could take 10 more minutes to read all the positive comments that you haven't seen, but I'm going to get a printout of all the chat stuff and I'll send it to you just because uh, you deserve to see these comments. Everyone has been very complimentary of you. Thanks a lot. You have a great uh, rest of the day. All right. Thanks very much, John and Rich, for doing this. Congratulations. And we'll see you next year in person. You bet. Thanks.